Let's go ahead and bring up the wonderful, the only cast of Buffy the Vampire Slayer! Look at us! Look at us! My pleasure. So uh, I think we're gonna scoot down one. You're gonna sit right here. You'll be here. Yeah. Does everyone have a mic? Um, I think I stole your mic. I'm sorry, Jane. That's all right. I don't need a microphone. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the mic. Okay. We know you don't Why need a mic. Not? <laughs> You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here. This is like, like I mentioned to them, Old Home Week. It's like I'm just going back in time to see some of the most amazing actors and actresses out there for a show that just meant so much to so many of these people and myself out there. Do you realize the impact that you guys continue to make to this day just because of the characters you guys played? Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't want to. I don't want to like. No, I don't want to appear egotistical. But I knew it from the start. Of course. Just like, is that Captain Kirk back there? Captain Jim. Hi, big fan. <laughs> big fan. Um, yeah, I used to come uh, to conventions dressed as Spock, like when I was 13 years old. This is way back before Star Wars came out, when there was only two things you could be a fan of: either Star War, uh, Star Trek, or Space 1999. And we hated each other. <laughs> we stared daggers at each other. So uh, I knew what, what a show would have to accomplish to last. And well, when we were filming Buffy, I was like, this might be another Star Trek. And if it's Star Trek, I claim Spock. <laughs> Spock, That's, Spike, Spike's the same thing. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of, I suspected that it might last at work? least. What were you? Okay, for me. <laughs> Why, thank you, darling. Okay, that's okay, because I can yell. I can yell. I can yell, people. It's okay. All right, I love that. And they both had the first uh, letter the same, which is exactly. also good, too. Exactly. Juliet, what about you? Um, I never really thought of the impact from the, like, I was on the inside doing my work, but it's been extraordinary. And um, the writing of the show is, it was so wonderful that people can watch it and watch it and rewatch it over and over again, so... Okay, you, you three, I'm going to have to separate I'm the so three of sorry. you. <laughs> because I love it. No, I love it. Yeah, we Should like we each other, it? so. Fine. No, it was all about you. you. It was all, literally, it's all about you. You just said something, and I, and I went, what the fuck? And then, and, then, and, and, then, and then we were being very, very rude. To, trying to collab, co-op, corroborate. Never mind. Never mind. Corroborate. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. It was all full of love. Coagulate. Yeah, it's all full of Oh, that works too. Geeling. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's fine. Go Sorry. ahead. Commiserate. So uh, being, just being a part of this and realizing now you look back at it and just the impact it made on not only these fans here, but fans such as myself and so many, just in your head, could you have ever even imagined something like this could have happened? Me? Yeah. No, God. No. I mean, I... The show was you know, really well liked by critics, and that's always, that feels good. It's, you know, you want to be liked by your peers, but you know, it also is nice to have, you know, people that you think are really smart also think you're, what you're doing is smart. Um, but I mean, we weren't, there was really no big social media poll, there was nothing like that, so in many ways it was just its own little bubble. So I, wow, that's James. Um, <laughs> So to, you know, you just don't know. Now when you do something, it's so immediate. You, get, you, know, you know exactly what's going on. Um, but back then, no. So to have it still resonate, it doesn't surprise me because the content's great. It just, you know, it's such a crapshoot. You never know what is going to take off, especially when you didn't really know it at the time. But I'm glad it has. Yeah. yeah. And I know you made an impact on some of us two times, not only because of being part of the show, but when you died. We were angry. <laughs> I was angry. <laughs> Too late. Too late. If that's a spoiler now, you guys got issues. Okay. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, I mean, you, what we do, we do in a vacuum. You're on a sound stage. You know, you're, you're you know, holding for every plane that ever left the Santa Monica airport. <laughs> so you'd be doing a scene and then they'd be, hold for plane. And then you'd have to keep going. And this happened all day, every day. Um, no, but you don't, you don't quite realize, I think, you know, 
Joss's words really impact people for whatever reason, whatever it is about him and his like way of, of, of being and his point of view, a lot of people really connect to that. And I think, you know, all of us were just glad that we got to go on the ride and, and be a part of this kind of bizarro sort of alternate universe where you walk down the street and people call you a name that's not actually your name but that you respond to because you spent so long playing that name. So every time someone says Tara, I'm like, yes, me, what? Oh, it wasn't for me, that was for that other, okay, sorry. Um, Doesn't happen that often with Drusilla. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, you, you, I didn't realize until until we started coming to these things and there was something called the posting board and people were posting on the posting board and they were very dedicated and intense about it and you know <laughs> they didn't like me very much um, but uh, some of them did wait the internet is mean the internet is not mean i don't know what you're talking about the internet is very mean <laughs> um huh too good for the simple world too good for the simple world yes I know Glory was too good for the simple world. <laughs> Glory was fierce and fabulous. What are you talking about? She was. You know, I feel like uh, what everybody's saying is true. We all agree. Um, and I think the show, you know, the, the themes and the relationships it stand up over time. The outfits do not. No. If, you, <laughs> if you watch now. They're all back in fashion now. <laughs> well, sort of. But the crushed, like, velvet, like, long jackets. And it's like the best of the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s fashion. <laughs> yeah. You said no. Are you kidding? What? You what? said no. What I say no to? Yeah, I say a lot of things. I just <laughs> constantly... <laughs> ap, 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 ap. What is oh, this... That was almost as if it was planned, Claire Kramer. I know. Um, so this shirt is a panel I'm doing tomorrow called Fandom Saves Lives yes. with Christine Kilmer, and it's about how fandom can help with um, depression, anxiety, PTSD, and all those fun things. I'm not describing it very well. <laughs> so that's tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Please come say hello. And um, look, being Clem was all part of my master plan to do uh, eight episodes of a show and then 20 years later you're here with it wasn't a very good plan but I carried it out that's okay there's one thing I want to get to before we get into more of Buffy and all of that I love that you put up the shirt because I know most of you do something to give back to help so mm -hmm. many people and I want you just to, to bring yeah. that up Which, what are your important causes that really call to you that maybe we can kind of jump on the bandwagon and try to help you out with. Sure. This, this one is of a lot of importance to me because um, I suffer from anxiety um, really bad. Um, and shows have helped, you know, it, as it turns out, I suffered from it early on, like from a little kid. <laughs> and then in high school, I discovered alcohol. <laughs> and that made it go away until it didn't. Because <clears throat> jail is anxiety inducing. Um, <laughs> So it was a way for me to, you know, fan shows and books and comics helped me through all those years. So it's a way for me to give back and that not only do, you know, fan, fans say, oh, this show helped me through such a hard time. Uh, from an actor's perspective, you guys help us through such hard times. Like a, a year ago, this community really helped save m me and my family's life. And I will never be able to repay that. Um, so I thank you very much, and it's just a way for me to be able to give back. Claire, what about you? Well, I can't really follow that up. <laughs> uh, I, I love you guys, and, and we all love you guys. Um, for me, I, in terms of philanthropy, it's not about one cause, but I, I really believe if I have a message, I guess, that I want to impart on everyone here, it's that when you make change, it doesn't have to be this global systemic change. Just by being kind to one another, being being nice to a stranger, the, the person at the grocery who's checking you out, or the postman, and getting to know people just in your immediate life who you may not interact with, but, but taking that chance, giving a compliment, that's to me what change on a small level is about. And it's really profound if you think about it, because it just takes one statement, one word that you say to someone else, and you can literally change their lives. You can change their own perspective and their point of view and encourage their self-confidence. So that's my message more than like an organization or this or that. So
I feel on the spot. I like to give and not tell anybody about it. I feel like that's, for me at least, it's like, I, it's not, you don't give because you, you know, you give because you give. Um, I think just helping people make sure they have food. I'm a big proponent of food banks. Please donate to food banks. Those are really important things. Just earlier, she made sure I had f- some fruit. I did. <laughs> You're it's being like, mom of the group. True. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> make sure they eat. I love it. Sorry, I couldn't. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm with her on that front in terms of, you know, well, I donate to blank and blank and blank. Um, I can just speak about it more in broader terms. Um, the thing that matters the most to me as far as an issue would be the environment. I just don't see that there is anything that's more important than that um, because without it, none of the other, I mean, well, you know, I don't have to spell it out for you. It's uh, it's really, I think, the most paramount issue facing all of us. And especially since I had my daughter, I, I, everything is seen through that prism anymore. Um, so I try to donate or help in any way I can certain organizations that are, um, you know, do good in the world in terms of that. Um, on a little micro level, I will say I have, I have, I carry around change <laughs> in my car and I feed people's meters. <laughs> okay. That's cool. I do. That, that. is cool. <laughs> I found where I park. And I'll, I'll just We're put, <laughs> but I do, it sounds like a small thing, but I have, having gotten many tickets in my life, parking tickets, cause I'm just like a second too late. Um, you know, I'd be really happy if someone fed my meter. So I try to pay it forward just a little. So feed way. the meters, people. Feed the meters. Feed the meters. I love feed it. the meters. <laughs> Juliet, what about you? Um, I support an organization called the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. And um, uh, Sophie's mother, Sylvia, started it. It's an amazing organization where she educates people against hate crimes. Her daughter, Sophie, was... Uh, Uh, was actually I found out later when I met her she was a huge uh, Buffy fan Um, but um, she was uh, her and her boyfriend were walking and they were uh, dressed goth not even very goth and they got beat up by a group of people and uh, Sophie uh, protected her boyfriend who they were beating up and she actually got kicked to death and um, her mother has been an amazing champion to educate people and, and is wonderful. So I support the Sophie Lancaster Fanda- Foundation and everything that they do. And then also my husband and I just made a movie. And um, sometimes, you know, creativity is a way to express ideas and thoughts and connect and communicate as Buffy and Angel has done, and we, we get to be connecting with you guys here. And it's all about um, growing up under the sway of narcissism and evil. And we've just um, been screening, and the conversations that it has provoked, and the stories that people are sharing, um, it's really gone above and beyond what we had, and you know, hoped for. And so that's you know another another thing. Um, I work with the Elizabeth Glazer uh, Pediatric a- AIDS, AIDS Foundation, Foundation yeah. and have for a long time. Uh, and uh, that's a problem that unfortunately hasn't gone away. Yeah. Um, and then voting, uh, both on that. social media and Thank yeah. You for that. However, anyone wants to vote is fine as long as everyone does. Bingo. I think we'll be fine. Yeah. All right. And there's a reason why I asked. Oh, I heard that. The reason why I asked is because you still have such a pool with so many people. So just hearing from you, even if it's just about donating for everyone or individual organizations, I think it just kind of spreads the message to continue to do that for them as well. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Thank you. There's, um, there's a really yes, great Instagram account. If you don't, it just makes you feel good in, about life when everything is all the other sort of news information out there is just so dreadful, but um, you probably all follow it, but if you don't, I highly recommend Tank's Good News. Oh, okay. Just, it, it will... Once again, what is it? Tank's Good, Tank's good News. news. And, okay. and it just does really kind of restore your faith in we humanity. We need more of that, for yeah. sure. It's all a right. really popular account, and he's, he's amazing what he does. So. I love that. All right, we're going to get to some fan questions in just a second, so let's go ahead and start lining up. We have two microphones, because I know you guys have lots of questions. So we're, we're looking for the brave second. people. Yeah, the really, really brave the ones. The really, really brave ones. Well, okay, but before we get to that, 
If there, I know you've probably gotten this question before. I'm going to ask it anyway. If there's any other character you could have played, what, which one would it be? Spike. <laughs> Why? Because Spike was the best. <laughs> well, I mean, I, for me, I, I, I don't know. I was just that you did. I mean, you're just my favorite. But what about you? Because you know everyone's going to say you. So outside of playing, Spike, I would I would play Spike. I know you would. <laughs> You're not helping me, man. You're not helping me. Clem. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I, no leading Clem to Clem got that all answer. the girls. Twenty hours later. Clem, all of the actresses who would sit on James's lap play with his ears all day. We're like, what's wrong with me, man? Oh, they didn't play with your ears. No, they just played with Clem. Clem, when Clem was on, we got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You Claire, know, what about you? No one ever says glory. I mean, <laughs> come on, she was great. I don't know. It's because none of us knew we could do as good a job as you. James, you're so sweet. Isn't he so sweet, guys? Um, I would play Buffy. I mean, come on. It's the lead of the show. <laughs> she, you know, uh, that's who I would play. I wouldn't swap. I love Drew. Drew is just such a deliciously complex fucked up character. <laughs> That's really fun. Sorry, I shouldn't have probably said no, that No, it's language. the truth. She was. <laughs> messed up. We'll say messed up. Sorry, okay. guys, for everybody with kids. Um, I just did a panel, actually, with Ron Perlman for our other pro oh, project, wow. okay. and he spent the first 45 minutes swearing and everything he was saying, and then this, like, five-year-old came up to the mic for a question, no. and he looked so apoplectic, so I'm channeling Ron. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyone else before we move on? Any other character you'd want to play? I mean, I was going to say Dawn. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> it, it didn't go over well. The joke and the subsequent... Ex Never mind. Never mind. It's okay, Emma. Jokes are better when explained. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah, you, it's good. Well, let's get to um, some... Oh, oh right. go ahead. No, no, go, go. No, no, no. It's your turn. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, it's not. You have to speak now. That's no, okay. <laughs> uh, when I was younger, I would have wanted to have played Spike, even though I don't have the cheekbones for it. Um, uh, but now that I am older, uh, I'd want to play Giles. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. Hashtag James Leary for Giles. <laughs> Who would do a hashtag to do a reboot for Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Yeah! I would love that. I would love that. The, are you trying to start a fight in here? I am. Okay. <laughs> Just a little bit, but I no, like it. No, it's happening. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're doing it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's gonna be good. Yeah, just say it. I'm just continuing to push the hashtag. So You know what that means? We're old. No. You are perfect for your age, so that's all that matters, okay? I'm trying. I'm trying, okay? <laughs> So can you can you say anything? Can you anything going on about you know about this reboot? Everything is there? Anything that's put together? Anyone? Well, Nothing. It's, not, it's just talk. It's not going to be. Talk. No, the it's thing not is, be. it's not that's an what actual I want reboot. It's, Correct. That's it's why it's not a new Buffy. Universe. It's not a new yes. Spike. Yes. It's a new Slayer for a new Thank generation, you. which you. is what we promised you every time, every time. that you watch yes. the show. So it's going to be a new Slayer mm -hmm. and a new cast of characters. Joss is involved. Yep. The showrunner, I wish I could remember her name, uh, is a very successful writer-producer uh, already, mm -hmm. but she grew up with Buffy. Buffy is what got her wanting to write in the first place. Correct. So she's, um, it's in her DNA, mm -hmm. and I've, I've got high hopes. Yeah. I love it. I'm glad you said because I wanted you to say that instead of me saying that. Did you guys want to say something? Yes. I just, I love that she's a woman of color. And yes. something that I feel like we can do better with this time around is to uh, have yeah. a very diverse cast. Mm -hmm. You know? Thank you for that. So, all right. Come on. Let's bring some audience questions. We're going to start over here on my left, your right. Go ahead, ma'am. You have a question. Um, I wanted to ask, um, of your characters, what personality trait did you find the most compelling? From any of them? Good any question. of them. Okay. All of them. Well, I'll, I'll just start. I, <laughs> Glory was very truthful. <laughs> she, she didn't lie, and I think that that is an honorable quality. <laughs> <laughs> what what it, and it's most what we found most interesting or most compelling what was the question uh, the personality trait of your that character that we found that most you personally probably felt 
was the most compelling about that compelling. character? Um, I would say, I zoned out there for a little bit. Sorry, everybody. Um, Clem, it would be his kindness. He was always willing to help. For Drew, I would say... He set her- them free. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I would say uh, Drew's capacity to love, because I think the the sort of 200-year epic love affair, you know, it was was I think that quality was probably, you know, along with the visions were pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I I would have to be with you, Julia. It'd be for Spike would be the love, which sounds weird because he was a soulless vampire. Uh, but uh, the deep love for for Drew, big time, uh, and and uh, man, and that other, than other that, girl a little bit. It hurts oh, you. Okay, okay. It hurts you. Must know. be nice, but otherwise nothing. Like the, the the part that I brought to the table was all of my darkest parts, which are which are not funny, and which are not really very fun to hang out with. But there is a spike in me, and I try not to inflict them on the world. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten better about that. But he's right there, and he's very lonely, and he's, you know, I'm, and I'm not lonely anymore, but I mean, like, uh, uh, there was a, a part of me that wanted to turn my back on the world and give up and just sit in the corner in the darkness and go, eh, mess, you know, to heck with you all. But if you combine Joss, humor's, Joss Whedon's humor with that side of me, then you get the character of Spike. But... But that's, yeah, that guy is not, uh, not so fun. Yeah. But we still loved him. Yes. Yeah. Great. He's great. great. Yeah. He still did. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. We're going to go over here. Uh, question right behind um, standing. Yeah, yes, ma'am, at the mic. Okay, I'm like. If oh, you have gosh. any other questions, you, everyone has to get in line. Sure. So. Okay. You. Um, so you've already mentioned the amazing writing. And I spoke with James yesterday. And one of the things I loved about Buffy was that they basically created characters for people to fight their own demons, right? Like they put fangs and they put a, a mean face to something to people's problems for everything. Were there any problems that you were extremely happy were addressed within the show? Or if there were any storylines that you wish could have been addressed that weren't addressed? Well, I mean, I, probably a lot, but, but I mean, in terms of there's so, so much that was addressed, but I think one of the things in the show, you know, the theme of the outsider, um, and and you know the 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 bond that the the Scooby Gang had, and then the bond that the villains had. Um, I think that that was something you know really interesting. In terms of that. Yeah, we. Oh, you know, I'm talking too much. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, we were talking. <laughs> we were we were talking about how how uh, Joss was asking his writers to come up with their worst day, the day that they can't talk about, the day that they got hurt or that they hurt someone so badly that they that it keeps them up at night, but they don't admit to, and then slap fangs on top of that and make an episode out of it and tell the whole world. And it was a sustained act of of bravery and uh, vulnerability uh, from the writers. Um, who are all very talented, um, they, would come on, they would come up on the sound stage and you'd be like, great script. They'd be kind of like, don't guess what I was actually writing about, you know? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, okay. But it, it, it means that the show, I think this is why it still resonates, is that, that, that it, it's not a show uh, from a bunch of Hollywood artists going, this is a wise thing that I learned. You should do, pay attention to my message. It's not that at all. It's just a human being saying, this hurt me. Am I alone? Did anyone else go through that? And I, I, so, um, I don't know, like there was an episode, uh, I think right before I got on the show, I was watching the show in preparation, so it might have been just the beginning of season two, maybe, and it was about a pack of what, like in, a pack of wild boys who were behaving like, like uh, feral dogs. Yeah, the hyenas. Hyenas. Right, hyenas, right. Yeah, Nick is really good at it. Y- yeah, he was fabulous in that. But, I mean, that's about boys in school that pack together and do real damage. And it's almost horrifying to think of which writer got hurt by that. You know? Another funny one is Tebulu Rasu, which is like... Has anyone ever woken up and you don't remember how you got there after yep. maybe a party or anything? Yeah. I think that's probably behind uh-huh. that one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, yesterday, yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good. Play the game with yourself. Try to guess what, the, what, what actually happened for that episode, yeah. Okay. That's good. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Over here? I'm going to ask a non Come a little closer related. to the microphone, please. I'm going to ask a non-show-related question. If you were trapped on an elevator 
with your favorite musician or musical act, who would it be? John Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just all time. Or Prince, but sadly he's not with us anymore. Oh. Yeah, David Bowie, I think I would have to say. John Lennon so I could get a hug. Oh. <laughs> oh, you need a microphone, right? That would probably help. <laughs> 1987 era Guns N' Roses. <laughs> Ain't nobody getting off that elevator alive. I don't know. Heart? <laughs> Both of them? Great choice, yeah. <laughs> the ladies? These are all good choices, but I, you know, had a talk with Sean Astin about <laughs> elevators. He doesn't get in them, and I'm rethinking my elevator relationship right now. <laughs> so I, I'm not, I don't know. Wait a minute, what's wrong with elevators? He, he, well, they can't snap anymore and fall down. Oh. That's, that's done. Oh. But you can get trapped in them, and he has been trapped in them for How long periods of time. times? Oh. I guess multiple times. And so oh, he's, if you notice, after the panel today, we took the escalator down. Yes, she did. <laughs> we took the escalator up, and now I'm kind of an escalator person, and I'm, I'm not going in elevators. So what band on the escalator would you... <laughs> probably probably uh, Fleetwood Mac because I want to talk to Stevie Nicks. Wait, okay, Juliet, I'm sorry. You missed the... You left him hanging. He oh, had his... <laughs> you I missed it. No, it's, it's okay. We still love you. It's okay. You know there's escape hatches in elevators, though, you know, at the top, but it's still that... There's a phone. There's a phone. There's a phone. There's a phone. Pop quiz hot shot. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had David Bowie in there, who yeah. cares? It's true. <laughs> She's got a point. All right. Let's go to this side over here, please. Hey, guys. Hey. Okay, so I'm just wondering, how do you guys think social media would have affected Buffy if, if it had been big during the day and also with Angel, uh, too? Uh, I don't think the show would make it. I don't. I, I don't think. I think a lot of... Sorry, I just like in on that pretty quickly, but I think um, I've, I've thought about that recently, actually. Like, the, show, the show existed without criticism, critique, opinion. I mean, there was a message board, but I mean, honestly, it wasn't going to affect anything Joss was going to do. I mean, I can't speak for him, but just based on his passion for it, I don't think anything would have derailed him from getting his message and point across and you know, f uh, finishing his vision. So, but I think going, uh, well, I think there probably would have been, there would have been uh, more outcry for persons of color on the show. I think that would have been very noticeable and spoken about now. And I think the 100 experienced a lot of this, the killing the lesbian trope, things like that. Um, I didn't view it as that at all back at the time, but I could, uh, the kill your gaze thing. Uh, I can see that that have being received in a way that would have been very upsetting for all involved because certainly that would have never been the spirit going into something like that. Um, but I think, I think a lot of shows that were... I think fortunate enough to exist without the pressure of social media would, would find themselves hard pressed to be able to move forward with what they want to do without a lot of feed, like pressure to conform to you know one way or another for better or for worse. Um, I don't know. Um, I maybe I'm totally off base, but I I think it would have had. I think it would have. If it, yeah, I think it, was, I, I think it I, would I, have been a hit still, but uh, and maybe some of the feedback might have made it a better show. Might have had just ended up with more yeah, color on the show. Such you a know? Fan base. Don't no, that's not what I'm at. I don't mean that. Oh, we have to. It needs to be. We need to have more p persons of color on the show, and that's bad. What I mean, because that would have been great. What I, what I just so that we're clear. That's not yeah. how I. Okay, just in case. The one like, thing I would say. On, girly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Poor Don okay, probably would have committed suicide. You know, no, like, no, yeah. no, no, no. And I will say this. Okay, the character of Don was supposed to be aggravating. 
It was designed to be irritating because the whole point was that Buffy comes back from heaven and she's put down into the earth and she's got to now get a job at the burger store. She's now she's effectively a mother and she then the pressures of life since it's like adulthood comes on her like that. And that was the whole point. And so, of course, her kids are going to be irritating. I love my kids, but they are occasionally <laughs> irritating. So, to, in a dramatic way, that Dawn has to be irritating. That's the whole point. So, if you were irritated by Dawn, gotcha. <laughs> it wasn't the actor. It was Joss. And he was making you feel that way. So. Do you think that, I, I, I mean, based on what she was saying before it gets to you, do you think that maybe the PC police of social media would have been more... Um, restrictive to the actual vision of what Buffy was behind. No, not because the vision. Not, not the vision? No, but I just think that Joss, maybe there were things that he didn't see. Okay. Maybe he's not a perfect okay. person. Maybe he's a human. And maybe mm -hmm. the, he had a blind side in, on, a, on a few things. And then maybe if he had heard back about that, he'd be like, oh, whoa, I, I could saying. actually do better. Okay. And I think he's a good man, and, and he would have. Okay. All right. I think it would have been very interesting um, to see now what the whole red pill 4chan incel, proud boy. You know that's from an Aladdin song, right? It is. I cannot take your movement seriously, one, because you're white nationalist, and two, from an Aladdin song? Um, I think it would have, like, I can only imagine the, the out, but why, is, why is it not Chad, the vampire slayer, huh? Well, there's gotta be a chick vampire slayer. But my impression. <laughs> that was good. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. But, yes. Oh, wait. Hold well, on. I'm just just going to say, but also, who oh. knows? You know, the fandom obviously was massive and continues to be and generation by generation shares the show. So potentially with social media, it would have even been bigger. You know, it's like having a crystal ball. Who knows what would have happened? But potentially it would have exploded even, even bigger or sooner or in a different way with that. It'll be as interesting well. to watch as the reboot comes along. Well, not the yeah, reboot, the new one, because yeah. that'll actually determine, based on how social media responds to it, we'll get to see it firsthand, what the response will be. All right, great question. Thank you so much. Ma'am. Hi. I would just like to make a short statement of gratitude before I, I ask my question. Um, is this time, like, it's the anniversary of when I first got into Buffy for the first time, and... I just want to thank you for being part of this part of my life when I, like what you were saying, James, about um, dealing with like anxiety. Um, before I got into Buffy, I was in a pretty dark place, and I want to thank you for being part of this emotional journey that I was on. And you guys really, through the characters and through just you, you guys really helped me out of that. Um, my question is actually not related to Buffy, it's about the Dresden Files. So if any of you guys read them, what's your favorite book from the Dresden Files? I like the one where he rides the dinosaur. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think it's the one that I didn't get to read. <laughs> it's just the one that got away. I read it later. Oh. Ghost story, yeah. Uh, so many things come together. Uh, that one or, or the one uh, in, in Chichen Itza, uh, where he has uh, yeah. changes, that's maybe the, the, the most emotionally favorite. impactful so, one. My personal so favorite so far has been more. Blood Rights. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am, and thank you so much yeah, for sharing you your so story much. with us, too. Thank you. It takes a lot of strength to come up and share a story like that, so thank you very much for that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so as a second generation Buffy the Vampire Slayer watcher at 18 years old, oh my God. I wanted to know what your favorite part of playing each of your characters was. Great question. I'm not Everyone's looking at me, all right, great. <laughs> um, I was a huge fan of the show. Um, I loved it. Uh, and it, when I moved to LA, it was one of the top five shows I wanted to work on when I got there, and it was the only one of those shows. Um, damn, Dawson's Creek lost out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, I, I loved Clem. Clem was awesome. I just liked being comedic relief, if nobody could tell. Um, and it, season six was a fairly dark season, and I really enjoyed getting to be able to come in every now and again and give a couple of zingers and lighten the mood a bit. 
I mean, I loved playing Glory, but that's a that's an interesting question in and of itself. Is what show did you always want to be on that you never got to be on? And I always wanted to be on ER, and I <laughs> if I would have been such a good patient, you know, I don't know, or a doctor. But uh, yeah, I never got to be on ER. Never got that call. I like the singing part. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. No, the singing part. Yeah. Wait, what was the question again? <laughs> Oh, my favorite part of playing the character. Um, well, I, uh, she's just so funny, honestly. I mean, it would be hard to, I, I, every time I read a script, I just laughed and laughed uh, at how ridiculous she was um, and the really outrageous things that would come out of her mouth that were an honor for me to say. Um, I just, she's, she's just, I think she's awesome. So I just liked, I liked playing how funny she was. I loved being able to be that funny. And frankly, I didn't even know I was funny before I did that show. I'd never done a comedy and I, I, I mean, I cracked jokes like in my house, but like I never, I never knew I was funny. So thanks, thanks for Buffy, I guess. <laughs> Um, I would say it was just all of the dimension of the character. There were so many different facets and so many different colors uh, to the character. It was a very rich character. Um, and so I think that the fact that she was completely diabolical, but childlike and sweet and loving and deadly and not well in the head. And, you know, there were just so many different places to go. Um, so I think that that's what I loved about it. Uh, I liked frustrating Buffy <laughs> or Angel. That was my. I'm uh, I am a subversive artist by nature, which means I like to divest people of lies that they assume are true but are not. And uh, one of the main ones is some people are more important than other people, which is a lie, and we're all equal. And in Hollywood, like Sarah is great. David was great, really professional and wonderful people, but they were treated like kings and queens because that's just the Hollywood way. And I came to Buffy from theater where we don't do that to this, this thing and the subversive in me was just like, what, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> but I, you know, I wanted the job and I, I, I fell in line and, and it was, oh, good morning, Sarah. How are you doing, Sarah? Would you like my seat, Sarah? But once they called action, I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm going to ruin your day right now. <laughs> and, and there is a sense of fun to spike that is that, that I'm actually really enjoying frustrating you. What were you thinking and, in the Drew scenes? Oh. <laughs> now I need to know. Oh, there's kids in the house, baby. I can't say that. So. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> but the, the frustrating thing for me was then, then Spike fell in love with Buffy, and even on action, it's like, oh, Buffy, have my seat, Buffy. It was like a cup of tea, Buffy. The, man, and that's why I loved going on Angel, because I, I could just mess with him so bad. Yeah. <laughs> And we are all better for it. I'm so sorry to say this, people. I am beyond upset. We're out of time. Oh, my God. That went so fast. Yeah. Um, it is like 3.48. Actually, we went over. We could do this for, like, days. Yeah, totally. Really. Well, come to our tables. We'll talk Please more. Please go to the tables. Please. Yeah. Please go support them. Please go support what's about to happen, all their future projects, because they are amazing. They're wonderful. They are Buffy the Vampire Slayer right here. Thank you, guys. Love you, guys. This is Goku. Thanks for watching. And remember, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, yeah!